Welcome to another edition of the Post Game Wrap. I'm Jared Johnson, and boy, it was quite an opening night at the Jones Saturday. I, I, I'll say this. Um, it was eventful today and tonight. Um, and ultimately, Texas Tech got out with a 28-22 victory, I mean, by the skin of their teeth, over Stephen F. Austin. This is a game I predicted that Texas Tech would win 62-3. to So that's what I think about the talent, depth, size, uh, di you know, discrepancy between those two. Um, I just, it was, I think, ultimately, they won. Okay? If, think about if they had lost, how we would view this. But I know a lot of people felt like it was an empty win. Um, you know, they felt like it felt like a loss. And I understand that. But the fact remains, they are 2-0. That being said, I think that had to be said, and, and it had to be focused upon. We have to acknowledge that. That being said, wow, and whoa, they looked, Texas Tech looked unprepared. They weren't focused, um, and they did almost everything in their power other than, ultimately, they played pretty good defense, and the defense won the game for them tonight, despite a terrible performance by the offense and a really bad job on special teams. Um, Tech, here's here's the ways that Texas Tech tried to lose this game. They lost the turnover battle, zero to four. All right. I mean, I don't know what the records are. Who would do that kind of research? But in the history of football, I mean, if you just want to focus on college football, say in the last 20 years, teams that were minus four in the turnover battle, no matter who they were playing. Like, how many times they actually won. I bet, it, you know, the percentage is very small. So there's that. Part of that um, was uh, a muff punt by McLean Mannix. And I asked Coach Wells after the, after the game, I said, look, you know, what's going on with, with, with Mannix? He can't field a punt. It's not just he did muff a punt, but then uh, the, several other times – he didn't go, like, just, just go fair catch it and stop the ball because it just kept rolling. I mean, there was one time the ball hit at the 12 and rolled and they downed it in the 2. Where that's, I mean, at the 12, that's automatic. You go catch that, you know. You, you go fair catch that if nothing else and keep the ball there. Keep your offense from getting pinned. I mean, all those empty yards, all those lost yards, uh, it happened three or four times in, in just in this game. And then it happened a couple times against Houston. I mean, why is that happening, you know, and. You know, Coach Wells said they need to do better, and he's not sure, you know, exactly what, what's going on there. But they need, they need to be better. The Mannix was hurt too, so we'll have to see. Perhaps maybe they should have someone else back there returning punts who will actually field a punt. And I'm not trying to just crush McLean Mannix, but I mean, if you're a punt returner, the first job is to return is to field a punt. And if you don't do that, then what is the value there? So I, that's, I mean, that's a way they try to to lose the game. Another way is, you know. In the uh, Mighty Joe and I recorded, you know, a podcast, and um, you know, he mentioned was, the team clearly was not focused, you know, like they were against Houston, even though you know they were down early against Houston. But um, he, you could just tell they didn't take SFA seriously, and there just was, was a lack of focus, especially on offense, and that was evidenced by all the personal foul penalties. I mean, that's they got at least five personal foul penalties, and like three or four of them after the snap, which is about what Coach Wells expects for a season. They had that in a game. So you know he's not happy about that. And that's a lack of focus. That's what it is. I mean, the drops by EZ, which early on, which really set the tone for the game being close, to be honest. Um, and then, you know, I thought the play calling, on, especially on offense, where they didn't stick with the running game, where they had – they had their foot on SFA's throat. They were up nine. The defense had just stopped them on fourth down at SFA's own 42. You had just gouged them two drives in a row to take the lead after trailing at halftime, 13-7, uh, by feeding Taj Brooks um, the, the rock. You know, I mean, he ended up with over 130 yards. But I don't have stats because that's another thing. The stats went down at Texas Tech. Um, so that's another thing that went down. And there's some more I'll talk about here in a little bit. But, uh, uh, you know, Xavier Wright. Or Xavier White also had, you know, a good game. Uh, they were able to run the ball in the second half, and then they stopped. And they got cute, and then on their own fourth down, they went empty instead of, you know, trying at least having a back back there to help them pass pro. And I, I remember Joe and I were grumbling to each other. We saw that because they were obviously blitzing. Shuck, you know, I put that on him. 
Uh, he didn't check out it or he didn't read, didn't get rid of the ball. He ends up fumbling. The two teams kick the ball 30 yards down the field, and the SFA they get the they get the ball deep in Tech territory. And, you know, all of a sudden, um, when the dust settles, it's 28-22, and SFA has the ball, and they drive it. First off, there was a second and 30. Jalen Hutchings gets a personal foul, which it was. He ripped the quarterback's helmet off. SFA marches down the field, and at that point, all Tech fans were saying, look, they're going to lose this game. SFA's going to win. Uh, but i got to hand it to Jalen Hutchings. I mean, uh, he, with first and goal to go, uh, he made four plays in a row. Got a sack, uh, tackle for loss, and then on fourth down, created pressure in, in, you know, in, that ended the game. So, and Hutchings talked about it, that you know, he felt terrible about that personal foul, which at least that one, it was bad. It was second and 30, so the, I mean, the chances of SFA converting were even against Tech, you know, and just the way things go for, seem to go for Texas Tech. It seemed highly, I mean, that's highly unlikely. You know, they were going to end up getting their first down eventually. Uh, but the person foul, you know, that gave it to him automatically, and Hutchings felt terrible about it, so he felt like he had to make up for it. And ultimately, I mean, he did, and they won. So, you know, I mean, there is a, a lot to be concerned with. And I, I completely understand. I, I mean, I'm not one of the, like, I haven't shot away when I thought Texas Tech has had to make coaching changes in the past. And I completely understand fans feeling that way. And there's like no, I mean, I think I counted seven fire wells threads between the, it's not just the freeboard normal naysayers, you know, um, negative folks. It was level-headed subscribers, diehard Red Raider fans for generations that were saying that on, this, on the uh, insider. So that gets my attention. You know, the, the free board, not all of them. There's some good posters on there, too. But some of them, I mean, you can tell they're trolls, you know. But that's not what it's like on the insider. And like I said, I mean, you have real Red Raiders, diehard fans. And when they're saying it, I pay attention. But I got to say, I, I'm not there yet. I get it. I get why people are going there. Um, but if they had lost, then, I mean, uh, I mean, what can you say, you know. But they didn't. They won. Doesn't mean they look prepared. Doesn't mean it was a good coaching job. Doesn't mean the players played well, obviously. Um, and I, the Florida International game takes on, I, as Mighty Joe said after the game, like I'm a lot more interested in that game all of a sudden, you know, because that's not a gimme, you know. Um, you you got to look at the way, the fact that they, because you know I was really banking on this being a veteran team, and this team's been with coach this coaching staff now for now. This is the third season, a, a, a lot of them, not all of them. Uh, but even the guys who are new, I mean, they've played a lot of snaps, Power 5 football snaps. So, I, you know, I was surprised that they came out so flat. But um, it, it was a uh, – it, it was crazy because it started off with such problems. You know, Shaq was there. There was there was a great atmosphere. There were some things that they did um, to add to the experience uh, – and add to the whole atmosphere to where you know fans were excited, fans were pumped. It was there was a there was a feeling in the air. And I was kind of honestly I was surprised because it's Stephen of Austin. But um, then the concessions thing happened, where half the staff or more than half the staff they said didn't they didn't show up. So people were having you know getting so frustrated, and understandably so. I mean, I, ultimately it is on Tech, even though this problem just kind of fell in their lap. And what are you going to do? But Ultimately, the you know the buck stops with them, and you know that's who fans are angry with is Texas Tech because you know you shouldn't have to wait an hour in line for popcorn and um, like I you know the stats going down for us you know and I, so, like a lot of this is out of like I can't point to someone at Texas Tech and say it's your fault it's your fault you know um, but this still happened you know and I know it's open at night you know it's the home opener and all that but it just it was a frustrating night. You know, the performance wasn't there. The concessions weren't there. We didn't even have stats. We have stats in the press box. I mean, that's so basic. I don't know, you know. So, um, it, in a lot of ways, it was a very humbling and frustrating night. But, again, they did it with a win. So, I think it, you know, it got summed up in a couple of ways. Some things Mighty Joe said, absolutely. But also, in a conversation I had with Don Williams with AJ, where, I, you know, we ran into each other right before the postgame press where Coach Wells and I just said, you know, look, you know, none of us are going to be too kind with our recaps of this game, and nor should we. But at least they won. It's a lot. I mean, imagine what it'd be like if they had lost. Like what our what all of this would be like. You know, half the town would be burning. He laughed and said, 
He goes, absolutely. He goes, just look at it this way. Would you rather be Texas Tech or Texas right now? You know, he just got blown out by Arkansas. And te Texas was a heavy favorite, you know, in that game. Uh, at least a touchdown, if not more. Um, and they lost. And I know Arkansas is an SEC team. We're talking about SCS team. I get that. I'm just saying his point and, like, who would you rather be? I mean, I'd rather be a Texas Tech fan if, if I were y'all, you know. Um, well, at least you got the win. So we'll see what happens with Florida International. Like I said, Joe made a good point. If they go on and they dispatch Florida National and they go into the Texas game 3-0 and, and then, you know, we'll see what happens with Big 12 play. If they have the season we were talking about going into this game, then we'll look back at it and be like, afterthought, who cares? And they got the W and it was crazy, but they won. But if they don't have that kind of season, look back and point to it like this is our first real evidence of like, um, maybe think they weren't as good as we thought they were. You know, and I personally, I think it's, it's going to be execution, not talent or depth and size and all that stuff. It's, you know, it was not there. So <clears throat> concerns about Tyler Shutt, concerns about him focusing on EZ, which I asked him about. He said it was the read, and he said, look, if EZ's open, I'm going to throw it to him. It's hard to argue with, but, you know, even Coach Wells admitted they got to start getting some other targets involved. <clears throat> it can't just be the EZ show. And it can't, especially if he's going to drop the ball as much as he is. I mean, I think that's at least three drops through two games. That's too much. Um... But he's also such an explosive player. You know, it's hard not to get that that Ferrari out there. You know, it's hard not to just to go drive that. You know, keep going back to it. So I think I, I don't, though the defense gave up some plays. I didn't like some of the soft cushions they, they had. I hated how they seemed to struggle so much against, you know, some screen game action, especially on one side of the ball. I think ultimately, you know, you won the game because their defense stepped up. They gave up field goals to touchdowns in some tough situations. They held up on fourth and, and uh, you know fourth and goal there at the end. Uh, so they, they won you the game. Um, we'll see what that ends up meaning with the rest of the season. But uh, I hope they start pounding the ball more because I think that's what we can, like what they can do. I think they need to run first and pass off that instead of, you know, all these five wides, all this horizontal stuff they're doing, these swing passes, so so much of them. I mean, there's a place for that, but not to go to that well so many times. These reverses, this, these empty sets, which in theory I like, but they don't have the offensive line. They don't have the offensive line against Houston to, to run the empty. They didn't have the offensive line against SFA. Uh, and the quarterback making decisions right now. I mean, he looks shaky. You know, let's, let's just be honest. Um, Shuck also showed off his arm. He also showed off his uh, speed. So that's still there. I still like Tyler Shuck. I still like this team. But that was a wake-up call. And they better wake up. Because um, they can't play like that against really anybody. Even even a Kansas might beat you if you play like that. Um, or Florida International before you even get there. So they got to wake up. And they got to play better. They know that. We'll see what they do. I keep going back to at least they won. Well, you know. Uh, and, and we'll see if that means something or not. You know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we look back like, who cares if they won? Or... They have the good season. Again, maybe we'll look back and say, who cares that it was a close close win? They still won. You know? So I, the rest of the season is going to dictate what this game really meant. But uh, never a dull moment when it comes to Texas Tech football or Red Raider athletics. That's for sure. And it certainly wasn't dull Saturday night in the home opener against Stephen F. Austin. Texas Tech moved to 2-0. Florida International back at the Jones. Same time. 6 p.m. Same channel. ESPN Plus. We'll be out there and everything. Have tons of content leading up to it. So with that, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.